think about right now some of the best rock bands of all time, whether it be the Rolling Stones, the Eagles, or someone else. Most people would agree that it was their music that really helped sell their brand. But for certain groups, it wasn't just the music that they wanted to go and utilize in order to get attention. They wanted their looks to stand out. And no, we don't mean being super muscular or really good looking. One of the best to do that was Kiss. And even now, they're still rocking that iconic look to the enjoyment of fans. Allow us to show you Kiss, then and now. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. How Kiss Formed Kiss traces its roots to Wicked Lester, a New York City-based rock band led by Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley. That band recorded one album, which was shelved by Epic Records, and played a handful of live shows. Simmons and Stanley, feeling a new musical direction was needed, abandoned Wicked Lester in 1972 and began forming a new group. By late 1972, Simmons and Stanley came across an ad in the East Coast version of Rolling Stones, placed by Peter Chris, a drummer from the New York City scene who had previously played in the band's Lips and Chelsea. Simmons and Stanley met Chris in a nightclub where he was playing drums. After hearing Chris sing, they thought Chris should be in the new band they were forming. Chris then auditioned for and later joined their new band. The three focused on a much harder style of rock than what was played by Wicked Lester. In early January of 1973, the group added lead guitarist Ace Fraley. Fraley impressed the group with his first audition, although he showed up wearing two different colored sneakers, one red and one orange. A few weeks after Fraley joined, the classic lineup was solidified as the band to be named KISS. They also began experimenting with their image by wearing makeup and various outfits. In November 1972, the band played a showcase for Epic Records' A&R director Don Ellis in an effort to secure a record deal. Stanley came up with the name while he, Simmons, and Chris were driving around New York City. Chris mentioned that he had been in a band called Lips, so Stanley said something to the effect of, what about Kiss? Fraley created the now iconic logo, making the SS look like lightning bolts. When he went to write the new band name over Wicked Lester on a poster outside the club where they were going to play. Later, Stanley designed the logo with a sharpie and a ruler and accidentally drew the two S's non-parallel. Because he did it by eye, the art department asked him if he wanted it to be redrafted to be perfect, and he said, It got us this far, let's leave well enough alone. Our number one rule has always been no rules. A rule that would both serve them well and also lead one of their members down a somewhat dark path. First Shows After getting their ideas, name, and logo together, they started to perform at shows in 1973. At a place called Coventry, which, according to Kiss, was a very important place for them, after a while, our first show ever was at Coventry. Coventry was a study in contrasts. The first time we played, there was nobody there. The last time we played there, you could barely get in the door. Eventually, they hired a manager who, within two weeks, per the band's demand, got them signed to a record label in Casablanca Records. By late 1973, they were starting to make their first album and opening for other artists. But the question was whether they were going to really make it work. We all know the answer, but at the time, it was anything but a guarantee. Taking Off by 1974, they launched their first album and did their best to heavily promote it by both word of mouth and by various TV appearances. One of which had Gene Simmons declaring himself evil incarnate to the crowd. Not exactly smart, Gene, but it worked in the end. Though, as Gene recollected, the bumps in the road were clear. Being in Kiss in the very first year and touring around the United States, we felt like we were taking off. It was like somebody pushing you into the deep end of the pool, whether you can swim or not. The early years of KISS were far from glamorous. We rode in a station wagon hundreds of miles every day. We would take turns driving and sleeping in the back. We ate burgers at roadside taverns. Becoming a rock star was better than anything and beyond anything I ever imagined. There were moments of doubt for me that we were going to make it. And in fact, they almost didn't. 
they almost failed multiple times. But one thing really saved them. Live concerts. In the music industry, live concerts are seen as the money makers for artists, as it's the best way for them to get the most money and to connect with fans. But the catch is that rarely are the concerts what brings fans to the table. But for Kiss, it was their lifesaver. And you should know this one and you can sing it. Do, 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 do. Because while their music was fine, it was their live performances that wowed people in regards to their looks, their antics, and making them the kind of concert that no one had ever truly seen before. So, on the verge of losing everything, they decided to do a live album featuring song performances they had done at multiple venues. This included a remake of their previously released song, Rock and Roll All Night, which had a guitar solo added and more, and it made it, and them, a true hit. Success what followed next were a string of epic successes for KISS. They released multiple successful albums, including two in one year, were selling out concerts, and even went to Tokyo for a five-concert tour that also sold out incredibly fast. Which Paul Stanley had this to say about, When we played in Japan in the late 70s, nothing could prepare you for the hysteria. Because when people are telling you how big you are, you're big compared to what? until you're faced with mass hysteria, it doesn't really sink in. For you not having been in a certain country makes them that much more rabid for you to go. Merch and Cameos Another thing that took the band by surprise and the world by storm was the merchandise for KISS. Because of their iconic looks, they were able to be put on anything and sell out very well, including makeup sets to help fans dress like KISS. It was said that within a few years, the sales were at $100 million. Just as important though, because their looks were so iconic, they were making cameos in TV shows, movies, cartoons, and comics. And that has continued for literal decades, from Gene Simmons being in a Dr. Pepper commercial as Dr. Love, to the band being in a Scooby-Doo movie, and more. Their looks make them one of the most iconic bands in literal music history but it did come at a big cost later on. Breaking up the band You see, when you have a group as over the top as KISS, you're going to have division in the ranks. And as the years went on, the hard lifestyle of being a rock star got to many of the members. Their drummer was the first to go, then one of their guitarists. And as Gene Simmons got more and more comical, in the bad way, it rubbed many of the band members the wrong way especially the new ones that were coming in to replace the old guard. They even ditched the costumes and makeup and tried to be KISS without them. And it honestly backfired in their faces. However, they did come back together and the original band was able to do a few more tours before they broke up again and got back again. And now they're currently on the last legs of their End of the Road World Tour, which will be their last tour, and it ends in July. The Legacy of KISS So, what will be the true legacy of KISS? Well, not unlike a lot of groups, it's very much one of the group on stage and the group off of it. On stage, KISS is one of the most exciting, over-the-top, and shocking groups to ever perform. Their live performances literally changed music forever. However, off stage, they were a mess. Gene Simmons has become one of the most controversial figures ever, and the fame and lifestyle they lived absolutely went to their heads. So their legacy is literally about which side of the equation you want to look at. There you have it. Kiss, then and now. Until next time, we'll see you in the next video.